What's everybody? It's Amon here. Hope you guys are having a great day. Before I go ahead and start this video, because of how my PlayStation is and me getting back into my account to film and upload things, the transfers from my PlayStation, my different recording inbox, I'm going to be recording this from my back camera. I'm showcasing you my video on my TV. Good form filter. Hoping you guys will appreciate this video. I know I haven't uploaded in a minute. Been trying to go focus on school, grinding, stay healthy, working out here and there, focus on my life. But I have been in the basement, I guess you could say, cooking up, frying up different parts of videos. I hope you guys will enjoy this. And yeah, love you. John Jones versus Mike Tyson. Two people that seem to have likeness for each other. Two, one of the greatest athletes within their individual combat sports. Two people that have been seen as the greatest. Two people who were unnecessarily defined by the fullest case of their prime necessarily to some people. Who are out of doubt, a iconic certification of beast, hungry, titan-esque records. Records that are undeniably one of the peakest records within the history of their individual sports, especially one person technically being undefeated and another having so many wins and knockouts, it is undeniably a crucial to their character. But who would win in their individual primes? Prime John Jones or Prime Mike Tyson? In today's video, as you see by the title, I'm going to be here explaining why this fight is very interesting but a fight that has a lot more merit to it than just simply this or this considerably. And also just coming back to go ahead and maybe do some real life considerable power scaling, I guess, as if you want to do that. Because the last two that I did this with was obviously Muhammad Ali versus Mike Tyson and a super back versus Mike Tyson. Shameless plugs to all of them. But in this, it's going to be again in case of two people fighting each other, explaining some more depth stuff. I know I haven't uploaded in a minute. Been in school, been working on some stuff and handling some business, but I'm back to going be pouring out the busing. I appreciate the weight, I appreciate the support. Enough talk, enough yet. Let's get into it. John Jones, one of the most peakest fighters in the world, one of if not the greatest fighter within the UFC has been considered to go for his record style, the way he's defeated people, and most importantly, having arguably the greatest record within the UFC and arguably being the greatest fighter to ever be in all of the former combat sports, MMA, boxing, all that type of stuff. Because of the fact of his long reach, multi counts of crack fiend, form styles, and movement, he has been able to wreck all his different opposition. Arguably, he's undefeated besides a very controversial and diversive case of talk, form disqualification with down elbows, as he's very superb and elite with elbows. His long reach helps him to go ahead and stagger people with his leg kicks, the oblique kick, multi-form kickboxing, jiu-jitsu like stuff, taekwondo. He has good superb wrestling and takedowns. It's decent in a matter of striking. He can be able to strike sometimes depending on the person and how they move with stuff, especially if you can hit hard. That might be helpful for Mike. And most importantly, with his submission form holds and different very mix-uppy and crazy form movement and things along those lines to be able to go about defeating the person. He's defeated Rampage Jackson, Chel Shannon when he's juiced. Obviously defeated DC twice within the case of his lightweight division. And at the same time, was wrecking people within heavyweight, even if he's dodging possibly the upcoming undisputed heavyweight champion of UFC. With that still being said, he is able to really stay on business beyond comprehension when it comes down to his prime and best people, even if he has multi case matter of different talks about being a person with the highest form of PDs to steroid use, as in the words of Nate Diaz, damn near a bunch of people in the case of matter UFC and across the board are on steroids, but he's the highest and most evidently proven and arguably even different accolades for his way of fighting, which you could consider to be dirty, as this man is literally a black boy guy, undisputed character, straight character, out of fucking Def Jam, <laughs> like, fucking like shit, like, this man, John Jones, besides all the case of the big talk, is a very creative fighter and a very big 
dog person when it comes down to his division, and he definitely deserves the credit of arguably being able to best everybody that he does. But the fact that this man has a multi case steroid use to be talked about, and there's some occasions where you could say he deliberately is playing dirty or moving weird verbally on real life, because I believe personally John Jones is black homelander. You can't disperse the fact that again he'd be fighting like no other as a warrior. My man is a character straight out of the Warriors, straight out of Denver from New York, like shit. Like he's built different, right? And John Bones Jones is still a killer like no other, so you gotta respect that regardless if you might move like ball rock here and there. But besides Jones and every count of what he does as a fighter, time to go and talk about Big Mike. Iron Mike Tyson. A guy I've talked about on this channel before. He's took it some else, but a great deal of dubs in the case of his accolades, being a proficient, hard-ass dude in the ring, one of the greatest boxers to ever live, the youngest heavyweight champion of all time, and has a punch force of about 1,178 pounds per square inch, with almost damn near 2,000 at a higher end. He's one of the hardest punching fighters in boxing, being about my top five is obviously, for a lot of boxing fans, I believe probably that big George Foreman, Afro Puff himself in his prime is the hardest punching person in boxing, arguably of all time, as there's no one really else that can really match that shit, except for maybe Deontay Walter, and Francis Ngannou, and maybe some people that are more just big Brock people, and not actually true account of actual, like, forceful player, in the sense of actually fighting, right, because... Just because you're big, obviously, in other cases, matter of things within your weight and caliber does not hold any significance in the words of Mike. It's more about what you do, the shoulder snap and the way you punch, your efficiency in the matter for how you actually go about stuff, and simply put, discipline and integrity, like the actual purpose in punching. You can punch as hard as Doomfist as you possibly might see in these clips, but how you actually punch is what really matters. And so even if you're a person that punches, like, the same matter of amount, as like Eddie Hall, the arguably strongest man on the planet, who punches with over like a hundred thousand pounds of force, it would never be as much as Francis Ngannou that punches with 130,000 pounds of force, and or Mike, who punches way harder than that, like, that's way more harder than him as a puncher, are you in the grandstand, because again, like I said, that man punches with 100 more rare deal damn near a fucking power punch than Francis Ngannou and obviously way more damn near than the case of some other people in comparison but still with that being said right this case a matter of stand thin right when it comes down to Mike Tyson and his efficiency in this street fight case of fighting a person on a whole different ball game than Mike Mike, when he was coming up as a youngin, was a street brawler, a delinquent, a fiend. Man was boxing niggas for money, but in this case, it's really just thrashing folks in the street. He was really fucking built for big dog snowman. Mike, ever since he was 14 to 15, was a strong big dude. But then, got put in tutelage under the case of a person that trained with Cus Tuciano, or how you say his name, D'Amato, where, obviously, he be he trained under one of the greatest coaches of boxing. The guy that trained for Potterson, the arguable original reform of Mike Tyson style back in the day, who fought Muhammad Ali. And then from there, he'd be trained to be the ultimate killer, the tiger of the ring, the best boxer of the time, an animal in the sport that has style like no other, and became more and more a beast over time in the grandstand for his great accolade of capabilities to be able with his size get in between a person's defense and wreck them with beautiful offense in this proficient setup and killer stand and pretty much Mike Tyson's whole thing was to defeat a person in the most fast time for a highlight and also just win as Mike Tyson even though not to say he has like terrible case of durability endurance and other stuff Mike Tyson because he gives it his time even though having way more harsher conditions than boxers do now has never actually fought a great lasting fight and done a great dish effort and no working case gain of fighting even in his prime. And I also talked about the case of what you would define his prime multiple times, but pretty much Mike Tyson's prime to me is easily the case of being at the highest end 
late to early 80s to easily mid 80s being like 1980 to 1985 as this is the time where he was taking boxing as a sport way more seriously had way more integrity and purpose to it aka passion and actually wanted to go ahead and do something with it and so this being said mike tyson right over time building to being the iconic stereotype of a person that has it all at the top and never thinks about the possibility of coming down when he comes down there's a very rough slide down if that makes sense especially because his loss to buster douglas being as controversial as it is considering it was just based off of the fact that mike has so much arrogance and so much deconsideration that's even a word for what he was doing and degrades his skill and purpose he could have beat buster arguably even though let me say this i'm not trying to discount buster douglas win and he arguably again arguably got knocked out in the 13th round i'm just saying simply put mike throughout a great deal of his career has never actually showcased his true product because age is not the five of prime in my opinion it's all about mentality you can be like Deji, KSI's little brother, being reasonably good age to shape, but if you don't got the mentality to win, push beyond, perfect beyond your limits, and really showcase what this sport is worth to you, you will not win in the grand scope. You have to have integrity, you have to have purpose in these bouts. It's simple. Like, that's the way it is. And just in general, you just have to go ahead and prove to yourself and others that you are the best of the best and Mike was moving on that means he was standing on business that he was the best of the best I'm the greatest fighter that's ever been there's no one that can match me my style is impetuous my defense is impregnable I'm as ferocious when he eats children praise be to Allah you know what I'm saying pause on that last part but that's his own words but besides the whole tangent talk when it comes down to his speed accolades and how efficient he's been within his prime, he's best in most case of people was still sending his Buster Douglas even if he was out of good shape. Stan, uh, again, proved himself to be one of the best foreign fighters there's ever been and has definitely the better striking and punching capabilities and arguable, you can say, I don't know, their abilities and stuff that could possibly outdo Jones here and there. But with everything that I said to define his prime and the setting of this being a street fight, aka a place that Mike has technically fought, but never faced somebody of the caliber of Jones, with this being said, even with Mike being able to be a very savage dude, you know, bit off a dude's ear, and arguably had some dirty keys a matter of moving and fighting, Mike just objectively couldn't be someone I feel like John, and I'm going to go ahead and explain the rest for why. Simply put, John holds a whole better capability as a fighter than Mike, as obviously he's a mixed martial artist. He knows way more. He can use way more. He has multiple capabilities in showcasing his wrestling and submissions that could actually put Mike out of commission if it would to be used in full effect. And all around, Mike has just never showcased himself to be able to be that good or efficient of a fighter against somebody that has better range, better capabilities of setup, and just simply has the better say, uh, capabilities of finish on him. As Mike isn't just going to be dealing with a guy that has a better style of strife and outboxer showcasing like Lennox or Vander, who are a kind of people that have defeated Mike, but more with footwork capabilities to get out of his range and set up things. Even if Mike could get in and pump him a little bit and really put the pressure on Jones, Jones has more capabilities to get a grapple, set up some stuff, flip Mike up, go ahead and spin him around like he did DC and get the finish, especially because Mike's whole case of strategy, because obviously he has a one big reach disadvantage, and most importantly, height, even though, let me make this clear, this isn't to disperse Mike's capability to fight, because Mike used his height to his advantage, as Mike is 5'10", 5'11", if you stretch, and he was facing people that are like 6'4", 6'7", big ass niggas, I mean, for a heavyweight, he is short as hell, I'm not saying 5'10 is short, regardless, respect to my short kings, but for a heavyweight, you are objectively short, if you are 5'10", in this case, and he was using that to his advantage, the whole crab walk, clean a big mix-up movement shit that was good but to a guy like john who is 6'4 and the words of kimbo 
big nigga. I like to knock big niggas out. Mike was doing that for a living. He still could do that to this day, regardless of the case. Mike Tyson beats Jake Paul in the money. Anyway, like I was saying, like Mike, even with that skill and accolade, fighting someone of this caliber with this case of height and reach advantage would just not be the best for him, especially getting inside his defense, I feel like would be worse unless he could get a sharp, clean form of clack punch or uppercut on him. Because even then, like, Mike Taz, if anything, has the punching power to knock Jones out because he's never faced anybody that hits as hard as Mike. He didn't face anybody with this type of striking caliber. He's never faced a very efficient boxer, even if he's been outboxed, arguably DC. But DC is not a proficient boxer in the same light. Now, granted, I'm not trying to disperse the case of DC's punch capabilities, but unless John would be off guard, which to say, like, in this case of hypothetical that he's not i don't really see mike tyson be able to get in like his iconic six piece you no know, popeye's biscuit to really piece him up beyond comprehension i don't really see him possibly being able like to do what he did to larry holmes i don't really think he could like bing him out like frank bruno he can't really set that up but if he could that's where i think mike tyson wins but back to the point for why I think John most of the time wins is, again, because he obviously uses feet. The type of way that Mike Tyson does so does not work, especially if we're talking about head kicks, which would easily destroy Mike's whole play. And simply put, Mike is just way too off balance in this fight. He just doesn't have the same gravity of fighting prowess and proficiency. Mike in this fight is going to be so much at disadvantage that this man, Jones, can kind of play around with his offense. I mean, if you saw what, you know, Briggs, or Biggs, whatever for his last name is, Terrell Biggs did to him, a.k.a. the whole idea of Lennox Lewis, Evander, and uh, Muhammad Ali argument against Mike, is that he cannot do good with someone that has the reach and speed, and John has showcased the reach and speed. He also, if they ever got into a Clint Cement thing, even though I believe Mike Tyson is extremely physically stronger than Jones, Jones has showcased that he's a very strong dude and that he could out-clinch him and, or submit him. So he either would just pressurize this man, Mike, with so much he's not used to, like leg kicks, head kicks, uh, frontal kicks to the face, uh, put pressure on him, maybe make morale be divulged to kind of just trying to survive didn't really put more hammer case timing on him disperse his whole plan beat him down either submit him or just like knock him out i mean it's possibly that john could literally actually kill him depending on how you see it and i know this video is probably going to like make a lot of people mad i'm not going to lie because this is the third time my man mike has took an l on this channel and Mike is a very superb fighter. I'm not trying to say Mike is a bitch. But I'm just saying there's a lot of cases that some of y'all don't understand that Mike is just not built for, even in his prime. Mike can hit with all this stuff for more power, but it is very useless if you cannot set this up most of the time, especially in the real quarters where someone like John can out-pressure Mike, set up grappling, set up kicks, or do something that will just deliberately beat him in like he just couldn't do anything in the grand scope to really stop this because mike's whole stuff is very useless against an mma fighter so yeah that's pretty much it for this video well this video was good case late again i'm sorry for the case i'm not uploading the busy with school we're going to go ahead and get these done personal life stuff at the same time just living you know what i'm saying and also, it's an obvious with the case of matter of my voice. I'm a little bit sick, a little bit under the weather, but I'm all right, though. I hope you guys were having a great day. I hope this video, if you weren't having a great day, has a little bit of spirits. If you guys disagree, tell me why in the comments. Please be respectful. If you're not, it's like, you know, fruition, whatever the case, though. I love y'all. I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Tell me more case matter possible real-life videos you guys want. As to do have some different plans of possible different what if capabilities of videos and this and this and that and the third that i can go ahead and make but let me know if you want it let me see you guys next one peace out mommy lay up that's the end of the video guys <clears throat> this is current amon here sorry for my voice there it has to sing my throat pause
I'm no longer super sick. I would say that I'm pretty solid when it comes down to the matter of, you know, when coming under the weather. But this is going to be the way I'm going to record for a minute. I don't know how long I have to get back to fooling to my PlayStation account. In the case of my recording, save inbox of different videos I have in mind are all ready. As again, I've been cooking up some bussing. So I'm ready to go and put them out. This is in my system software or some of them that have to be uploaded through PlayStation. Because I got some videos that are not going to have to be uploaded through PlayStation and during the Because I have a drive and I can tend to fight for this. But some of the mainline videos that I have that are on my PlayStation, aka this TV, need to be uploaded through this type of form of camera. So I'm hoping y'all bear with me and that y'all enjoyed the video. Regardless, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Love y'all. Peace out, mommy.